$93 million in cuts to the Women, Infants, and Children Nutrition Program. Since those shiny new F-35s aren't going to pay for themselves, Congress did manage to trim a few areas of the budget. For example, the Special Supplemental Nutrition Program for Women, Infants, and Children, commonly referred to as WIC, was on the receiving end of a $93 million budget cut. WIC provides low-income mothers and children with vouchers that can be exchanged for food that meets certain nutritional guidelines. You know, maybe those low-income women and children and infants should try hiring some lobbyists or being planes, with really good lobbyists. Number three, nullification of voter-backed marijuana legalization in Washington, D.C. The 2014 midterm saw voters in Oregon, Alaska, and Washington, D.C. vote to legalize marijuana for recreational use. Unlike in Alaska and Oregon, however, the D.C. ballot measure is subject to congressional approval. So, despite the fact that the actual citizens of Washington, D.C. voted for legalization by a margin of more than two to one, anti-legalization advocates in Congress attached a rider that completely undoes the voter back change and keeps marijuana illegal in the district. And while this is basically a flaming middle finger to the 70% of DC residents who voted for legalization, I'm sure the pharmaceutical industry and alcohol manufacturers, both of whom regularly fund anti-legalization campaigns and spend millions of dollars every year to buy political influence, are pretty happy with this outcome. Number two, the part that Citigroup wrote. So after the 2008 financial crisis, a lot of people were understandably less enthusiastic about derivatives trading, a financial instrument that played a major role in the crisis and led to the collapse and eventual $85 billion taxpayer bailout of insurance giant AIG. As Ben Protest of the New York Times explained, Congress used the 2010 Dodd-Frank law to create a requirement that banks push out some derivatives trading into